Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we find ourselves in the Brecon Beacons where we're going to do our first official test ride of the M-Line Brompton. I can honestly sit here and say I have no experience in off-roading nor have I ever done any trails. But today I have so much confidence in this build that we're going to take on the infamous gap here in the Brecon Beacons. It covers pretty much all off-road terrains that you could possibly come to expect and I am extremely nervous to see if I can hold up, not necessarily the bike. If you didn't see the review video, I'll just go over a couple of little specs of what we're riding on here today. We have the Brompton M-Line, which comes with 20 inch rims. We've got 11 speed DI2 on the back. We have a 42 chain at the front. We have 160 hydraulic discs at the back. We have the 20 by 2.4 Schwalbe Smart Sham, uh, Smart Sam tires. We are got the usual setup at the front where we have our Insta360 head unit. We're using a Garmin 830 for navigation. We also have the Ergon handlebars at the front. Now that we're done with the talking, let's take the Brompton M-Line out on its first ever test ride. He's the Brompton Gang! Right, I'm recording again. And oh my God, has this started horrendously. Like really poorly. It's took me about 25 minutes to find the start of this. My gearing is slipping. My left cleat keeps coming out. And I just climbed a tiny little hill and it feels terrifying. At this point, I don't think I'm going to be going through with this. <laughs> I feel I should have road tested this a little bit more. But if I can tell you one thing, is I am pretty sure I'm coming off this at some point. Don't know when, but I am pretty sure I'm going to come off it. I am way, way out my depth here. I think I'm forced up here. Jesus Christ. Jesus. This is effort. Righty route, first section done, and oh my goodness, I've never went over terrain like that. It was a gradual incline on very large rocks, and my goodness, is that a learning curve. I honestly feel so out my depth here, but I have to prove that this project worked, and it would be great to do this, and then actually get an experienced mountain biker on, just to get a bit more feedback, because the effort down there was absolutely massive. It was huge, man. My overall feeling feels better. I do think I'm going to be underhydrated on this ride, which anyone who follows the channel knows I suffer with. Um, so I'm trying to take it easy as a, and not crank out, oh, sugar puffs. Um, but I'm actually starting to get into this a little bit more now. I think because I've known it's kind of did the terrain I've seen in videos of being like, ooh, that looks horrendous. I definitely can feel it a little in my butt already. Like it is fairly brutal, but it's so different from anything else. And obviously I've never done this on a real mountain bike before, so I've got no idea if I'm using way more effort. I think one thing is clear, is it's big effort, because I know for a fact I'm just constantly ascending, just constantly, so I can't wait to get onto the scenic parts and just feel like I'm actually in the mountains. Section of the Tour de France. I know. Oh, so much of that. I'm regretting already. Holy moly. So I'm just taking a quick break. Still ascending. It's unbelievable. It's just constant. And I can already see ahead of me, there's more ascending. It's quite hard to get in the back, but behind me, there's an amazing drop behind all there. You can just see stacks of water going. Um, and yeah, it's, um, it's been challenging. 
very challenging indeed. Um, just from a purely constant climbing point of view, I think the bike's actually handled it fairly well, to be honest, and well done to the little guy, you know, there's no major stuff. I mean, this is the first test ride, so this is where I'm realizing maybe the gears are slightly out of index, and maybe it does need some work, so I definitely knew I was setting my sights big for this one. We are still climbing. Still, it's just one constant climb, which I knew, but I was honestly so much more worried about the terrain, I didn't even focus on the elevation, so big effort. The last bit was super scenic, but just a nice pretty steady road. Coming in this bit here, I hit some really mucky wet areas, so I'm hoping there's a couple more so I can get some of that on footage, but at the moment it's just kind of a nice wet woodland road which you can definitely feel like the sink on the back tyre really digging in to get out through it and that's what it felt like on the on the muck when I first came in really digs in so definitely feel the big chunky boys taking their strength there the biggest problem so far is still the damn Brompton seat post it has slipped so many times but at least with the telescopic, I can account for that. Holy crap, has it got hard and has it got hard fast. I've just came up this here, which I hope looks steep, but oh my God, it was so wet. And Oh, it was so hard to stay on. I feel like in my lowest gear, I've got such little traction, I can't push on. But I also think there is a good bit of inexperience in there at this point in time, because I know I should try and follow the ruts, which is what I'm trying to do, but I don't have the confidence to really plow down into it. So, been a massive learning curve, but as you can see behind me here, I hope you can see anyway, it's magnificent. The wind is out in force, so going to be cycling into a headwind by the looks of it all the way up. And then as I come round, hopefully, then I get a tailwind. But so far, this bit has kicked my butt, man. I've came off like three times now, nothing serious, just no traction and then straight off. I honestly don't think I've hit the surface of how long this ride is yet. I think I've got ages to go, so here's hoping that I can make it. Well, I've got one option, and that's to make it, because I don't want to go back the same way. So here we go. Fudging flippers, man. This is tough. Absolutely draining. When you come off these, man, it's hard to get back on. That wind, it's intense. The views are opening up now. As I said, it's how I know I'm climbing. Hello guys. Don't mind me. Oh, mind me now. Uh, do you know, I've been on my bike for way over an hour now, and I've not been in anything less than gear one. So, as I'm pushing, as you may see, this is hard work. I'd have loved to get this little section clean, but I just don't think I've got the experience. The biggest issue I have is keeping the traction between the wheels. Because when I get out the saddle, I can really get the traction over the front, but then I lose it at the back. But if I'm putting too much conscious effort at the back, right, if I'm doing that, then, uh, I'd have never got up that, that's intense. My goodness. That would have been hard. I'm exhausted. I'm pacing out over some grass. 
This has been an intense first trail experience. Keep saying I'm going off route and I don't like that. So I should probably try and follow the route up here. This has gone from starting off pretty good to holy heck, I'm just in the middle of nowhere. Absolute no one around. I've just went through a massive bog. I'm still not halfway, I'm still not halfway in yet. I'm just like, when does it relent? When is it, I mean, I am, I do know there will be a downhill coming soon, but even looking up that way, I'm like, oh my goodness. So I'm actually just in my first descent now. I feel privileged. <laughs> I think I must be on a bit, oh my goodness. Oh, sugar puffs, here we go. <sighs> Have I picked the poor areas to go? Probably. And I'm off. Oh, shit. Oh my god! <laughs> oh sh balls, man! Oh. oh, this is new! Oh, here comes the wet stuff! Oh. I'm so grateful not to have came off there. I don't think these poor cleats are helping either because I've got my left foot just constantly coming out. Really annoying. So I finally started to hit some descents and I had to stop halfway through the descent because it's just magnificent behind me. Just the amount of just vast land and open water up this way is just absolutely magnificent now i feel bad i feel bad being your tour guide here because i don't know the names of the places but it's enough to make me stop um, as you can maybe hear behind me though there is some people cheating that's decided to bring their motorbikes up so it's a little bit unfair and some of them did pass me um, on a really stiff tough terrain bit um, but i just got off <laughs> Um, so hopefully I'm on descent for a little bit now. I might get the drone up here and get some drone shots. So here we go. Holy bumper stickers. That pedal is killing me, man. That is so messed up my cleat. Oh. It doesn't stay in, so you try and pull up and your foot just comes out. Really frustrating. Really, really frustrating. Well, don't know if this bit will go. Oh, thank you. Get off that bit there. <laughs> I just want to go on record and say this ride is beyond bonkers, man. Really, really beyond bonkers. Like, damn. There was a section back there. That, crazy, man. Just crazy. I'm burnt, burnt out. Energy's low. I'm on a hill. My left cleat is really, really teething me off because when I'm on a technical rocky section, it's not in the cleat, so I go to pull up and steady on it and the flipping pedal just comes out. Really, really frustrating. Um, that's how it goes, I suppose, right? But as you can see, I'll flip the footage round. The views just now are amazing. 
So I can only imagine. I, I'm pretty sure I can see where this path goes up and out. What a tough day on, on little sleep and little exercise. Maybe when I know I'm in a prime state and um, got two working cleats in the right shoes, maybe I'll come back to see what this is like in round two. I mean, it has, it's been really good. It really has, I mean, but I think it's so much mentally to take in because I'm learning so much new skills. Like I've never done this before. So like learning how to stay, stay on the loose stones, how to handle the mud, all that. Like this has got it all. Like this has been the test for it. But my goodness, it is a big day out on the bike. It's not necessarily the bike making it hard. Well, the bike's definitely making it hard with its weight, but it's just generally a really big day out. I don't think even in a normal um, hardtail that this would be much easier. Oh, uh, this is just gonna be a quick one. I'm exhausted. I'm so close to the top of the second climb. This one's got me. I've just ran out of juice just before that end bit there. Hopefully taking a rest here and being able to power up. Out of water now also. Yeah, it's close. I'm going to take an actual rest when I get to the top, but my battery's flashing at me, so this will be my last video till I'm out of the, the red. All the climbing's done. I'm now at the point where Penna Van is to my left and Fanny Big is to my right. And then after this, I've got the descent of the gap, which I'm not going to lie, looks pretty terrifying. But that effort was intense, man. Really, really intense. Like, I don't think I'd want to do it again, at least for a couple of months. So I finally got down the rocky descent and I'm now on some tarmac which just makes me feel so much better. I'm definitely a tarmac type of guy. Oh, this is exactly what I needed, man. Exactly. I'm running on empty here, man. Running on empty. It's been emo an emotional one. An emotional one, to say the least. Strength. Put that over. So it's probably time to see how much I prefer road riding as an overall whole. Just if uh, nobody knew, I'd share that little fact. performance on this bike is astronomical. Brilliant. And for me, that's uh, the biggest upgrade. The braking performance. Oh, good. So much confidence. What an emotional day. It has been unbelievably taxing and I'm now on the last 5k to get back to the car. I am incredibly dehydrated and absolutely ravishing for some food. All I had on this entire ride was two caramel wafers and some salami and a little bit of cheese. So needless to say, I didn't prep or prepare for what was expected. Overall, the entire time out was just shy of eight hours. Needless to say, food was very much welcomed and the sight of the car could not come quick enough. Well, that was certainly one of the hardest challenges I've ever done in a long, long time. I already knew from the start that I was setting my horizons big, but I had definitely bit off way more than I could chew on that ride, and taking a whopping eight hours really was way above my estimation of four to five hours. I was incredibly underprepared, but I did prove one point. A Brompton specifically built for it 
can go off-road and tackle a mountain terrain that even some e-mountain bikes struggle with. That's maybe from a rider perspective and not the bike, but it's just very cool to know that I potentially was one of the first people ever to take a Brompton into that environment and come out the end without anything apart from mucky clothes. I've certainly got so much more to learn and I do look forward to cover each individual topic itself later on in the channel. But for now, I think my, my butt is in such a bad place, it would be nice to have a couple of days of rest and get the slick road tires back on it so I can actually start doing some road comparisons from a 16 inch Brompton to a 20 inch Brompton. And coming later on in the year, before the year's out, we might have some exciting electricity news um, to add towards the Brompton journey here. But this video has already been long enough, so thank you so much for your patience. If you have enjoyed it, please help me out. Boot that like button because it helps me get to a wider spread audience. As always seen in the channel, thank you so much for your support. Enjoy your night and we'll see you for the next one.